right, for Creighton, we've got on our left, Grant Gibbs, number 10. On the right, it's Lee Douglas Dermott. We'll start with a statement from Coach Greg Dermott first. Now, sometimes over the course of a season, you, you have to find a way to not be perfect and win. And uh, tonight was an example of that, uh, especially when with our free throw shooting. Uh, last time we shot free throws like this, we lost at St. John's. Uh, in a game that was very similar to this, where we had opportunities and uh, <coughs> couldn't quite get the job done. But, uh, uh, you know, we found a way to win. Uh, I thought Seton Hall played really well. Uh, they're, they're much different without Gibbs. And in some ways, that was more difficult for us uh, because of uh, their determination to throw the basketball inside as much as they did. Uh, it has seemed like, uh, at least in, in, in my evaluation of them, they haven't, they haven't given teams as steady a diet of Teague as they did us today. Uh, and obviously that was difficult for us at times. But, uh, you know, Doug stepped up with some big shots. Grant, Grant hit some big threes, made some big plays. And, you know, we found a way to win on a night when we, an afternoon when we weren't, we weren't perfect. We got out hustled on the boards uh, <clears throat> and, and made some, you know, uncharacteristic foolish fouls at times and then missed some, some free throws down the stretch by a couple of guys that shoot 90% on the season. So sometimes that happens and you, you just hope you hold on. And uh, trust me, I'm going to enjoy this one as much as I've enjoyed the other 22. I guess to both guys, you had chances to get separation at different parts of that game. They kept coming back on you. Does that eventually start to wear on, wear on a team? Uh, I don't think so. But I think that, uh, you know, we got to that eight-point mark a ton of times, and that's when we had a little slippage. And, you know, whether it was a, a scattering board thing or um, an offensive rebound uh, or, you know, not closing on a shooter. And so, you know, we got to continue to try to tighten up those facets of the game. And that's something we've emphasized. Um, but, you know, every time we got to that eight to ten point mark, um, it seemed like we had a slippage. And, and credit them, they, they played really well, took advantage of those opportunities. Conversely, they cut it down to one several times <coughs> down the stretch. But you guys always seem to answer with a big play. Talk about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a big time game there down the stretch. You know, they, they just wouldn't go away. And, you know, Grant hit a couple big threes there, and uh, we ran a couple plays that are successful for us. And you know, we got a lot of confidence in each other um, that we're gonna execute on offense. You know, we just got to get better at finding a way to get get some more stops. Um, they were a really good team, and you know, it's a it's a tough, tough, hard fought victory for us. Doug, uh, to win the game like this when you guys aren't at your best, what does it say about you guys and be able to pull through on a night when things weren't exactly the way they have been? This yeah, it says, it says a lot about us, you know, our maturity. Um, you know, we kind of won an ugly way. Um, you know, me and Ethan don't miss those free throws much. So, uh, you know, I think it says a lot. We were able to um, find, make some stops on the stretch that were pretty big, and Austin made a couple of big hustle plays there on the, the jump ball call. So, you know, it shows how mature we've gotten and uh, found a way to get the win. Grant, just a situation of taking advantage of I uh, just made a couple shots, you know, nothing more than that, really. Um, you know, they did a good job defensively. I thought we were really um, kind of sped up in the first half, and we weren't getting the looks that uh, we normally <coughs> get, and that, that's a credit for them. Um, but, you know, we didn't do a great job of taking advantage of the opportunities that were going to be there. I thought um, getting downhill on ball screens was there most of the night, and we kind of um, went to other parts of our, our offensive game. So we didn't do a great job of recognizing that, but, uh, you know, credit them with their game plan. Um, yeah, I think it was a little bit of both. Um, we, we were planning on him playing, uh, but you know, like um, Coach said, uh, he did a, I mean, Cena did a great job of running that team. You know, he's really unselfish and, uh, you know, I credit them because they really took advantage of Teague inside. He's a lot bigger than, you know, me or Ethan or Will. So, you know, he's tough to stop. And we had a double team that allowed them to get probably more open looks than we wanted to. Um, but either way, with or with, with or without Gibbs, they're still a great team. 
Doug, that last possession when they when you got the ball inbound and they double teamed you, did that thing get slapped away or what? Yeah, a little bit. You know, uh, he kind of bumped my arm, but you know, it's not an excuse. Uh, I probably should have just held it and taken the five second. I mean, you get five seconds, so they're gonna foul anyway. Um, just a careless pass, but we found a way to, you know, we got away with one there. I guess to both guys though, when that ball's kind of like bouncing on the floor, right under the basket, what's going through the mind? Uh, not a great feeling, obviously. Uh, but you know, we knocked it over to Ethan. He was there. Um, you know, that's part of those little lapses in the game. We work on our press break all the time, every day, and we got to be more dialed in with that stuff so we can execute late in the game. But uh, that one bounced our way. Uh, you know, we had some that didn't. Uh, that one did. And um, you know, we were fortunate to pull it out, but we'll, we'll take it and learn from it. Two more for the student Next time you guys uh, step on the court out there will be the last time for each of you and the rest of the seniors on the team. Have you had a chance, I guess, to take that in, or is there too much going on, or how's it, how do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, you know, before this one, Coach DeRee said two more, and there's only two more in this building, and I hadn't really thought of that until he said that. So, um, you know, I thought that last year at this time, too. Um, but <laughs> I guess I got one more left. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things that crosses your mind. But obviously, we're focused on the next game. Uh, we got to, you know, take it, you know, one by one if we're going to try to win this championship. So um, that's part of the thought process, obviously. But, you know, knowing that we got two on the road first. Yeah, I mean, it really hasn't even sunk in yet that we only have, you know, one more here. Um, so. You know, we got to take care of business on the road first, but you know we'll have a tough Providence team, you know, coming in um, for our senior night. So it's going to be a lot of emotion out there, and you know we're going to we're going to leave it all out there on the floor. And you know I'm excited to to get there. Okay. Yeah, it's feeling fine. You know, I just kind of got bumped there. Um, kind of late in the game, but you know, it's no excuse to miss those free throws. You still got to go in the, up there and knock them down, but uh, I'll be fine. Just a minor deal. What's going through your mind when you're seeing that ball bouncing in there right under their basket? Well, hoping somebody in a white shirt's going to dive on it. Uh, you know, we uh, Doug caught it a little deeper than we obviously wanted him to, uh, and I had a feeling they may trap first before fouling. Uh, but you know, we obviously have got tremendous confidence in Doug to make a decision in that situation, and you know, he obviously made the wrong one uh, on that particular play. But <clears throat> sometimes you're you, you need to be a little lucky. And in that situation, obviously, we were. Great, with everything in front of you, uh, seeing all, you know, being where they were at in the standings, did you get the sense that maybe the guy, I don't know, not had up for this game, or, or did you not get that sense that, no. or is it a credit to, to them to play so hard? <clears throat> Seton Hall played really well, and uh, our guys were pretty locked in in practice. I, I thought our preparation was pretty good. And, uh, you know, without question, the the way Seton Hall played against Georgetown really got our guys' attention because they uh, they shared the ball, they moved the ball, uh, they were good defensively. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, we, we had a feeling we were going to get their best shot. And th it's a, uh, like I said, they're, they're different without Gibbs. And in some ways it was more difficult for us. Uh, <clears throat> but defensively they're they're much improved from the team we played in january uh i, I was impressed with their uh, their ability to stay with what they wanted to do and fight some screens and switch some screens at the right time so uh they uh they had a good game plan and they executed it well is, is some of that they have more bodies now than they had against you in january yeah that's part of it and they're running in, in and out of there and obviously we played a little different because we extended our pressure some, because we felt like they really only had one point guard. Uh, and obviously, he's not used to playing as many minutes as he played tonight. So we were hoping we could wear into him as time went on. And I think in some ways, we probably wore into ourselves. Much of you mentioned the free throws. How much of a concern at this point in the season to have something like that happen? Or is it? <coughs> I'd like to think it's just a fluke. You know. 
we, we'd be standing here a long time if we were going to say, all right, Ethan and Doug, go miss four in a row. Uh, we'd be here till sometime next week probably. Um, just happened to happen at the wrong time. <clears throat> is there a lot you're going to take away from this as far as what you need to work on or just, just February <coughs> basketball in your mind? I, I would think that uh, it would sharpen our focus a little because we, we weren't as – as good as we normally are, but the reality of it is, and I've said it many times, you, you play uh, college basketball such a long season, and you're, we're not going to play like we did against Villanova 28 times, 30 times. You're going to have times where you don't play perfect, and oftentimes what determines whether you have a good season or a great season is if you find a way to win on the days when you don't play perfect, and today was one of those days. We weren't ourselves in some ways, and Part of the reason we weren't ourselves, as I said earlier, was was because of Seton Hall. Uh, but you know, for us to miss free throws and turn it over uh, at, at critical times uh, <coughs> is not not who we are. Uh, but we still found a way to win, and it, it's gonna it looks just as good on that side of the column as any of the other ones. Thank you more for coach. Greg, talk about this three game stretch closing out the conference. <coughs> and how you're gonna approach it? Well, if you you know if you'd have told me. Uh, in November that we'd be sitting here close to March 1st uh, tied for the league the lead in the league uh, and have the league championship uh, have the ability to control our own destiny in that regard I think everybody in this room and the 19,000 people out there would have all taken that so we have put ourselves in a good position and now we got to see what we can do with it obviously uh, we're going to play uh, three teams that are fighting for their NCAA tournament lives. And uh, those are scary teams to play because they're, they're going to throw everything but the kitchen table at you. Uh, their focus, their intensity is going to be off the charts. And you know we've got to find a way to match that and then some. Um, so <clears throat> you know, we'll have a light workout tomorrow. We'll take Tuesday off um, and then you know, start our preparations for Xavier on, on Wednesday. Since nobody asked Doug about moving into the top ten of the all-time scoring list, we'll ask you about it. <coughs> it's I mean, it's really cool. Uh, uh, hard to believe, but uh, you know, really, uh, as I've said before, just really hard for me to even get my arms around it. Uh, uh <coughs> but to do it on bobblehead night, I guess, is something that uh, he'll always be able to remember. I think I think it'll mean more to him. Uh, somewhere down the road than it does today. Uh, I think it'll. I think as all of us look back on it five years from now or ten for years from now, uh, we'll probably appreciate his accomplish accomplishments more than we do today, just simply because we're all in the middle of it right now. Uh, and the most important thing to all of us is finding a way to win the next game. Thanks, Coach. Doug got a box up, and hopefully he'll give me one. Maybe.